I think the problem is that, that, that a lot of us just kind of love technology because it's technology and it's glitzy and it'll do lots of lots of great things. The reality is a lot of the great things that it'll do we don't really want or need and so we get blinded by uh, additional features, by the potential to do X, Y and Z when in reality we've never done X, Y or Z before and there's no reason to think that we'd, we'd want to do that now. So the, the key thing I think is to try and understand what it is you want to do uh, and it may be supporting an existing activity or it may be allowing you to do something new that you can't do before and then finding the right bits of technology that actually help you do that. One of the issues I have with technology companies and, and computer manufacturers and smartphone things, people is, is that they don't spend enough time doing that. They don't spend enough time trying to understand what it is people want to do and supporting that properly. They're pushing the latest gadget or the brightest screen or the, the, the flickiest gesture or whatever it happens to be and that, that isn't necessarily what we need. So it comes down to people actually trying to take a step back from, from the newest glitziest thing and trying to un understand what it's supporting. Now that doesn't mean it's just about tasks, sometimes what it's supporting is a fashion statement, it's supporting making you look cool, it's supporting making you look geeky, whatever, whatever you want, but trying to understand what that is and then making the right sort of choices effectively I think mean that, that we'll end up with better bits of, of technology. The other thing I would say is that the thing we, we have to do as consumers is demand more from the, from the manufacturers. We put up with so much rubbish technology at the moment, stuff that's hard to use, stuff that doesn't do what we want, stuff that promises so much and doesn't deliver, and we just kind of accept it and then buy the next thing they offer in the hope they fixed it. Whereas we need to be a bit more um, direct and vociferous in our complaints, and, and that, would, that would push the usability of technology up much more. Another thing that you've written about recently is about the friction between uh, international media and national law. Um, how, how do you think that will uh, play out in future? Uh, I, I think that's going to seesaw backwards and forwards for a while. So uh, recently, um, things like Twitterers in, in other countries breaking um, English law injunctions has, has, been, has been prominent. I think that, that a lot of these companies and a lot of the individuals are actually going to find that, that the law is being used to pursue them. Um, there's a, a company at the moment asking BT to uh, impose uh, file sharing restrictions and reveal who's actually doing file sharing of copyrighted material, um, it, so they're effectively using the law courts to, to go after people in, in you know, copyright infringement cases. And I think that the pendulum will sort of swing towards standard law enforcement techniques and then it will go back and, and people will find ways of using technology to kind of break those, those sorts of things. Where we actually have to get to is we have to understand the sorts of things that the technology does do well and the sorts of things that it, that it actually allows to happen that we think is, is wrong and we have to find ways of, of having both technological and legal and societal solutions to, to these sorts of things. The, the reality is that, that you can only have law with the consent of the people and if the majority of people don't want something uh, then we probably need to alter the law. We have to be careful though in that the fact that you have 10,000 people on Twitter saying something, that doesn't make a majority. That, that may be representative of a majority, but it may just be a very vocal minority. And we've got to start looking at it and balancing these things. But it has made things very, very difficult. It's made, you know, definitions of criminality quite hard to, to understand because what's legal in one country may not be legal in another, and it's very hard to work out where, um, where the infringements are taking place sometimes. And so it's an area that I think is going to keep lawyers in business for very many more years. And one final question, uh, what are you most optimistic about for what these new technologies mean for, for us in our, in our regular lives? And the second part of that question, are there any uh, reasons for caution? Uh, the, yeah, I'm actually optimistic about huge numbers of things. I mean, I, I, I've seen technology help people be much more than they would otherwise have been 10, 15, 20 years ago. They're able to, to reach more people, they're able to express themselves better, they're able to communicate better, they're able to, to, to experience more things and, and I would hope that it's going to continue doing that. Um, in terms of being cautious, I think we have to understand that there are a lot of downsides and a lot of non-understood areas when, when technology comes in. So. You know, it's, it's understood now that, that people get bullied by text message and bullied on Facebook. 
that can be harder to see and harder to uh, explain to people and harder to stamp out than bullying in a playground, which is much more much more visible and obvious. But it's it's at least as damaging. Uh, it's psychologically very difficult for people who uh, who are um, victimised in this way, and that's something that we've got to be aware of. That. that people engaged in it directly have to be aware of, that parents have to be aware of, that society has to be aware of. It doesn't mean that the technologies themselves are bad, it just means that, that you know, within society some people will find good uses for technology and some people will find bad uses for technology and, and that's, that's always been the way. We've just got to make sure that we don't throw out good technologies because they've been put to bad use, but we've got to make sure we accept that there is bad use and try and address that in, in all its shape, way, shapes and forms.